Kia ora, we're just going to do some really basic um, problems on the Poisson distribution from page 38. Okay, so pretty much we're just going to be given a lambda value when we're dealing with Poisson. Okay, so here, the mean number of cyclones striking a Pacific island is 0 0.6 per year. Now, lambda is both the mean and the variance. So it's, it's both the, the most occurring and how spread out it is. Okay, what is the theoretical probability that no cyclones strike the island during a year? No cyclones. So here is our x value. Look at that. x equals 0. Right? So that means we're looking at what is the probability that x equals 0. Given lambda, which is here, Lambda equals 0 0.6. Now, the other thing you've got to be really careful with with Poisson questions is make sure that this per year matches this during a year. See that? Per year during a year. Perfect. Now, sometimes they'll give you something that's like proportional, but we'll see that come up later. Okay, so lambda value 0 0.6, x value is 0. So, what we can do from there is I kind of want to just show you what that actually means visually. So when you've got Poisson, it, don't worry about all this scary stuff, but pretty much it just means the lambda value is 0 0.6, so it looks like this. The gray bars are the probability that x takes that value. So the probability that x is 0 is here, 0 0.54588, uh, right? And the probability that x takes on the value 1 is this here. De, de, de. See how the most occurring is actually zero here. The orange bars on this Desmos program show you the cumulative or as they add up together. So this gray bar plus this gray bar gets you this orange bar here. These three areas added together, they equal up to this orange bar here. Okay, so we are going to go to our calculator and I'm just going to use this diagram to explain what we are actually calculating. So when we go to stat, we go to distribution with F5, then we go across with F6, and then Poisson, which is F1. We are looking at, so th this is what I want to explain. PPD is looking at each point, so that's each gray bar. PCD is cumulative, so it's these orange bars. It's if you're adding them all up until that point. So this one here, we just want to know the probability that x equals 0. So we're just looking at a point. So we're going to go into variable. So x is 0, nice. And mu, I wish that was a lambda, but it's a mu. It's a bit dumb, is 0 0.6. And I'm expecting to see 0 0.5488. Look at that, 0 0.5488. Uh, let's go to here. Okay, so this probability, p x equals 0, ooh, I sort of did that wrong actually, I should have crossed it out, equals 0 0.5488, if I remember correctly. Cool. So let's go to the next one. What is the theoretical probability that two or three cyclones strike the island? So there's going to be a couple of ways to answer this. This one here, we are looking at x equals 2 and x equals 3. And lambda stays the same at 0 0.6 because it's still during a year. Now, to do this, we could just do the probability that x equals 2, and then we could add on the probability that x equals 3. And it's probably going to be the most straightforward way to solve this one. So in our calculator, we'll find those two points. So we're going to go 2 first. So that's 0 0.0988, and then we'll do our 3 next, like this, and that is plus 0 0.0198. Uh, should I do that calculation? It's kind of annoying because you have to get your calculator, go back to this screen, and type it in like this, 0 0.0988 plus 0 0.0198 so that means it adds up I'm going to put the equals above it's a little bit sloppy but you know let's 
0.1186. Okay, what is the theoretical probability that four cyclones or more strike the island during a year? Okay, cool. Lambda is staying the same, it's still per year. But this says four or more. So what I like to do with these is write a probability statement. So P x is greater than or equal to 4. And sometimes it's worth having a sort of think about what that would be. So that would mean 4, 5, 6, 7, dot, 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 dot. Right? Let's have a look at this distribution. So the question they're asking us is, what is the probability a cyclone is from this four onwards? So we're adding up all these gray bars, but they're so flipping tiny that it's almost negligible. So we can we can see that in the side over. Well, let me just get this scaled up, looking nice again. We can see it over here, four or more. See how the probabilities are super small from here onward, right? But our calculator is incapable of working that out in cumulative. Because these orange bars, they are cumulative, so they add up from zero. So it goes zero, and then zero, and one, and then zero, and one, and two, and then zero, and one, and two, and three. Right? So in our calculator, we can't actually answer that question. So we're going to have to use a little bit of... Yeah, we're going to have to use some, some brain power. So what our calculator does work out is our calculator can do the probability that x is less than or equal to any little x. That is what our calculator is capable of finding. It can't do probability that the thing takes on anything that's greater than or equal to 4. So we're going to need to use some tricks to find out how to do that. So what I'm going to do is first, I'm going to rewrite this one. That one is the same as the probability that x is greater than 3. See how these are the same as each other? Because this would still be, so what numbers are greater than 3 in a discrete distribution? Well, 4 is greater than 3, 5 is greater than 3, 6 is greater than 3, 7 is greater than 3, and so on. Right? But we need to get it to being this statement here. So how are we going to do that? Right? That statement, we need a way to look at every other number. So we're looking for a way to look at 0, 1, 2, 3. If we find the probability of 0, 1, 2, or 3 cyclones, and then we minus that off 1, that will find us the probability of four, five, six, seven, or more cyclones hitting the island in a year. So in order to do that, in a statement that looks like this, it would have to be the probability that x is less than or equal to 3. So this is the statement we actually want to find. And when we find that statement, it will get us to this statement. And I'm going to write that out for you. So. Uh, do I have space here? Sure. The probability that x is greater than or equal to 4 is going to be 1 minus the probability that x is less than or equal to 3. Right? This is the answer here. This is the way that we're going to be able to solve these questions. Because our calculator can do that. Our calculator can find the probability that x is less than or equal to 3. Right? We just put in x equals 3 here, and we make sure that we're in... Go across to Poisson. We make sure we're in PCD, the cumulative, and we want to know everything up until the number 3. And that is a... Yeah, that's about what we were expecting. Uh, where am I going to write that on here? Uh, do that over here. Right, so it's going to be 1 minus 0 0.9966. And that is 0 0.0034. And that is our answer there. 
the probability that there are four or more cyclones, this statement here is just one minus that statement there, and that is 0 0.0034. Okay, what is the theoretical probability that fewer than two cyclones strike the island in a year? Okay, so it's still a year, so lambda is still going to be 0 0.6, but they want to know fewer than two cyclones. So how do we write that? Fewer than two cyclones. Probability x is fewer than two cyclones. Can our calculator do that? No. Our calculator can only do probability that x is less than or equal to some number. So we're going to have to rewrite that and it's going to be p. So let's think about what those numbers would be. In, what numbers are less than two? Well zero is less than two, one's less than two, two is not less than two. So we need another way of writing that. So it's the probability that x is less than or equal to 1. Right? So see how the numbers that are less than or equal to 1 are the numbers 0 and 1. So this statement will work. So we just change this in our cumulative to the number 1. And it's 0 0.8781 equals 0. 8781. I'm just going to go across to our probability distribution picture there again and explain that one more time. Now, what we were trying to work out is what is the probability that there are less than two cyclones, right? So we are looking at this orange bar here because this orange bar counts up the probability of zero cyclones plus the probability of one cyclone. So these two things here add up to that orange bar. And that orange bar is all cyclones less than two. Okay, so those are the achieved sort of basic Poisson questions.